Hello team, it's Hamish here from Automotive Tech and in this video today we're going to have a look at the charge plate and we're just going to show you how to test your boundary wire system in and the health of your boundary wire to make sure it's all good. So this is a video for if you're trying to find if you had a break in your wire and where that was located and the health in your boundary wire system. This video is not on how to fix it, it's just to make sure you know where that break is in the section and also what the condition of your wire is regarding resistance and how to check that resistance. So for your charge plate, you just pin it back from the back. You can either pin it back by a bit of tape like that, which I'll quite often do just to hold that out of my way while I'm working on it. But for the video, I've just taken the two screws out of the front there and I'll just lift that off. So if you want to do that, you can just undo your wee wire there or your LED and that's out of your way. So then you have your multimeter, you want to set your multimeter to ohms of resistance, 200. And then for a start you want to take your two boundary wires, so AL and AR. Doesn't matter which way around you plug these in. I don't have the standard Husqvarna connections here because I liked the crimp connectors. They're a lot more solid and they won't wiggle off. Nothing wrong with the standard connectors, but these are a bit more a bit more easier and user friendly also for checking resistance. So you will see there, obviously all wire contains some resistance. As a rough guide on that resistance there, we've got 10.8. This is a large install, this is over 700 meters of boundary wire. So I would expect that to be around maybe between 9 and about 13 roughly. So 10 is looking real good. The less wire you have, the less resistance. As a guide, 20 ohms of resistance will trigger a blue light on your charge station. So the two ways you can do it is you can check for ohms of resistance through your multimeter, which is more accurate, it's going to show you what's going on, or you can take your guide wires and click them over onto a boundary wire like so. So now I'm checking the system has a green light between the left boundary and guide one. So I know that in a complete loop in the boundary there's no break in between that. Then from there you can take your guide two. This is a good way to check out that your guides are working because you've got to remember that the, the, the green light on a charge station indicating that everything's all good doesn't take into consideration the guide wire connectors here. So it only worries about a boundary to boundary. So if you had holes in one or a break in one or two or three of your guide wires, the green light will never show that you won't know. You'll just know that your mower might not be getting somewhere. So that's guide two, guide one. And so we go guide three to boundary again. Check and we've got the green light. So the green light check versus your blue flashing light. That's the easiest check. But for someone like me that's a technician, I want to know a bit more that's going on. So I'll start boundary to boundary. So 11.1 there, 10.9, that's perfect. No ohms of resistance. And then I'll work my way through. So I'll go guide one. And these are long guides as well. These guides are around 90, 80, 90 meters, each one of these guides. And that's all good, so we've got 9.4 ohms of resistance, that's perfect. This is large install, this will read higher than most. Guide 2. See, that's a shorter distance as guide 2, so that's 2.8. So that one there is least amount from the boundary to the charge plate in a loop. And then we go to guide 3. Right guys, I'll just explain that in more detail with the picture here, I've got the whiteboard out here. Just to show what's sort of going on when we're connecting up the AR and AL or the guide wires to the boundary wires. So just keep in mind the charge plate's only going to give you a reading of a green light off the boundary wire connections. It doesn't care if there's a break in any of the guide wires, but in this case we're just looking at how we find if the system is healthy and we've got signal through all of our guide wires and our boundary. If we did doubt a guide wasn't working or something, 
this is what we could do or if we were trying to find which part of the boundary the section had a break in it in the wire then we would be able to sort that out so for the example we're testing AL to AR so let's say for example that that didn't work so we're like okay we've got a break somewhere so then we would start figuring out where that break is so we would plug in AR to G1 so effectively that's just giving us a loop one connection connected loop like that we know that that section the guide and the boundary is all good there's no breaks in there that either gives us a green light or the resistance is showing really good from there we'd plug in AR to G2 then we would be looping all the way around here down and back to the charge plate or the multimeter and then we're about okay g one's good g two's good okay measuring around we're plugging in ar again and then into a multimeter or charge plate g3 be like oh that's brilliant there's more resistance in there but that's sweet still only like 10 or 11 nice g is good and then we're like oh we didn't get a we didn't get a green light or low or clear good resistance reading between AL and AR. Right, we measured all here, so we know this is all good, this is all good, this is all good. There must be a break here. So now we know that because signal went through every other wire, that our break in the wire is somewhere in between AL and G3. So that would be the same if you found a break anywhere. So if you didn't find so if you found AR and G1 work good, and then you went AR and G2 didn't work, you'd be like, oh, hang on. Well, it's probably not in between here and here. The break must be in, in here. So then you would just check between G1 and G2 to confirm that that break, you'd be checking all around there, checking this loop here, and you'd be checking that that was still a break. And you, so you'd have no resistance or a blue flashing light. So you can match match any combination you want. You're just finding which section of the lawn's good and which isn't good. The only other key thing is knowing where these guides finish. You should have them mapped off or your installer will have them mapped off. And I personally like to for all my installers installs. There's a metal 50 by 50 galve or stainless washer pegged here. Now people are going to say that's going to grow over. It is going to grow over, but on a map I know that is. When I come back to it in a year or two time and someone's smashed through here with a spade or a digger or some lineman's going to come along and done some work and put some pipe straight through here into the house or something like that, then I'm like, okay, well, I know it's probably there because that work just got done, but I want to know where that guide wire ends and this one here and this one and where previous breaks in the wire are when they're fixed for the future. So I hope that helps a little bit, we'll go back to the video. So doing this way here, if you know where all your guides end, you can decide which section or loop that's in. So that just shows me that all our three guides are in healthy resistance. The normal amount of boundary wire and resistance is showing really, really good. And then likewise, if you, weren't, if you wanted to double check the in-between guides, so if you weren't sure where that was, you can also check out your guides so we're going guide two to three, really good. There's not as much distance in between these, so less resistance. Remember you do want some resistance, naturally there is gonna be resistance on wire, likewise for those two. But most people will just run, if you're at home and you don't have a multimeter, just switch your guides over for your boundaries. Check that you've got green light, you know you've got your loop in there. As long as you also know which of your guides are which, some people don't accurately number these, so they don't know what, when you've got all these wires here, three guide wires, and you never bothered to number them, you don't actually know which one is which, because if you keep in mind of your map where guide one, two, and three went on your, on your printout when you first installed it, you'll know, okay, that one there goes over to that corner of the garden, I don't know exactly where it is. So these three guides here and every join in this install are marked by washers and on a map. So that means if I get a break in between this boundary and this guide, 
I know what section of boundary to check. Awesome guys, that's it. That's it for this video. Any questions, just shoot them below. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.